about 10 minutes of what God is doing in Africa next uh, Sunday morning in the, each of the morning services. But when he heard that there was going to be a commissioning service for Apostle uh, Bird to be, he said, I want to be there for that. And they went through all kinds of hoops to jump through to make it happen. And they're here tonight, and we're so glad they are. Just delighted to have you. Let me share a few minutes before Pastor Bird comes, and then help understand the commissioning of an apostle. Ordination is not commissioning. It is a whole different process. Ordination is a legal, government-recognized action upon those with a proven record and a calling. Naomi Dowdy, great, great lady who had a church in Singapore for several thousand people in that congregation, and over 1,000 of her leaders in the church wanted to ordain her as an apostle. She said, no, being an apostle is not an ordination. The word apostol in the Bible times was a title reserved and given to military generals or Navy commanders, those who were in top military authority. You don't ordain these people. They are commissioned into their place of service and their, ministry, their, their function. After her commissioning event, she looked back at it after several months had gone by, and she became aware of three areas of change in her own life by her own testimony. She said there was an increase of revelation in her life. In other words, God was ministering directly through her, even though he had, as a pastor, there was now the establishment of other churches under her ministry, and God was doing something new in revelation of truth to her on a daily basis. She said, I saw an increase in the anointing of God upon my life and upon the apostleship that I had received. She saw an increase in authority. God gave her a new sense of responsibility in what she was doing and an authority to carry it out without question. Apostles are given responsibility to establish strongholds for God's kingdom. Strongholds mean you open cities with the gospel. You start a church all through the book of Acts and the New Testament. The apostles who started out as disciples and then all became apostles, as they were carrying out their work, they would go into an area, they would gather a group of people, get it started, and then assign a pastor. And they oversaw that pastor, come back to visit him, to encourage him and do what, they, what needed to be done. That was the work of the New Testament church. Prophets, Prophet Bob Jones recently said, it's time to stop intercession and start proclamation. Job 22:28 28 says, you will declare a thing and it will be established for you. So light will shine on your way. There's been a decline in honor and respect in our days for positions of authority. What used to be Mr. So-and-so and Mrs. So-and-so is now John and Joe and Mary and Bill and so on. There's, there's a lack of sensing a, a, an honor for age, and for those who carry responsibility. It's just recognized in many different areas. We are all equal in God, no question about it. Every child of God is a child of God. And as a child of God, he speaks to them, but they don't carry the same responsibility. You remember that it was Aaron who was equal to Moses in a way, and in a way he was not. It was Moses' voice to him that became the authority upon which Aaron operated. In Exodus, the fourth chapter, verse 10 through 17, these words, then Moses said to the Lord, oh, my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither before nor since. You have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. He had an impediment of speech. The Lord said to him, who has made man's mouth or who makes the mute, the deaf, the see and the seeing or the blind, have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with your mouth, and I will teach you what you shall say. But he said, O oh my Lord, please send by the hand of whomever else you may send. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. It wasn't the only time, by the way. And he said, Is not Aaron the Levite your brother? 
I know that he can speak well, and look, he's also coming out to meet you, and when he sees you, he will be glad in his heart. Now you shall speak to him and put words in his mouth, and I will be with your mouth, and I will be with his mouth, and I will teach you what you shall do. So he shall be your spokesman to the people, and he himself shall be as a mouth for you, and you shall be to him as God. It's a big statement. That doesn't mean he was God, but God said, I will talk to you, and what you tell him will be my word to him. Apostles supposed to speak with that authority. You shall take this rod in your hand, and with it you shall do the signs and wonders. And we watched the ten plagues and all of the other times when the rod went out over the Red Sea and it parted and so many other times when that rod became the instrument of authority that when he used it, it was in God's name with God's authority and it was God speaking. If you live next door to a policeman, you are equal to them as citizens. But when he puts that star on, he takes on a new authority of the government that he represents. And the same is true with apostles. In a sense, it's true with pastors, teachers, evangelists, prophets. He's, the same thing is true, but in a different sense. If the apostles and the prophets are the foundation of the building of the church, they operate in a different authority than the rest of the fivefold ministry. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, let me turn to it. Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 20, these words. Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, the foundation of the church of Jesus Christ, he himself being the chief cornerstone. May I explain a little something else? What we have known in America are denominations. Denominations are man-made. The New Testament church was God-ordained. God appointed apostles. Apostles set pastors in order, brought prophets into their place, teachers into their place, evangelists into their place, and God started that going. I don't fault denominations for what they have done because there was a need to organize and do something and accomplish it. I can remember for many years in the denomination I was a part of for 25 years, I can remember I was a district superintendent, carried responsibilities on the boards of that denomination, and it was all by election, man choosing. I'm here to tell you that there is a huge spike in that problem because it becomes a political process. The most votes gets the most power. That's not God's plan. God's plan is that apostles should hear from God and then with his authority carry out his work and do that work. So here he's saying the foundation of the church are the apostles and the prophets. Each in its place is needful and important. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, he's talking about what we call the five-fold ministry. Ephesians 4, verse 11. I'm sorry, I got the wrong one here. 4, verse 11. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. Those we call the fivefold ministry to the church. By the way, within the body of the church, most people will fall under one of those classifications that they lean toward as well. They will be prophetic. They will be teachers. They will be evangelistic in their way. They just want to win souls, don't care about teaching a lot, but just let me win souls for Jesus. That's the evangelist. And you find in the congregation people who fill those classifications outside of the leadership of the church within the body of the church. The fivefold gifts are all vital in the church and are equally important in their authority. If the general is an apostle by position, it can't function if the majors, the lieutenants, and the other officers aren't in place doing their job with their anointing for their job. Each office carries its own anointing, a different portion, a different part. It is Jesus who sets each minister in the position that they are gifted in. Identifying apostles is not a spontaneous decision. I knew many years before I was 
commission an apostle, that I was doing the work of an apostle. I start to run down the list of churches that we started through our ministry time, and there was a host of them. And what we were doing was apostolic, but in a denomination, it's an office in the denomination. It's a whole different picture. And so I was not recognized until one day, Prophet Chuck Pierce was here for a Women's Aglow meeting at a banquet, and they seated me right beside him. And we were sitting there visiting and talking. He looked at me and he said, you're an apostle. Well, that was the first time anybody at that level of life had declared that. I'd never paid any attention. And then later on, we had a convention here. And Peter Wagner, who was then head of the International Coalition of Apostles, and uh, there were three other apostles who were here for our commissioning as an apostle. Identifying apostles is not a spontaneous decision. They are observed by other apostles and prophets and prayed about for some time before it happens. I've been pondering Pastor Bird for a long time. I've watched his organizational structure of the mighty X-Men and women. I've watched him expand it into other cities. I've watched his enthusiasm to see it happen. I've watched the curriculum grow. I've watched the things that make me understand this is an apostolic flow that is coming through his life. Apostles should be known for integrity, stability, organizational skills, and the vision of the future. I believe we've yet to see what mighty X-Men will arrive at across our country. Their fruit will affirm their apostleship. It will affirm, confirm. We must not think that all apostles plant churches. There are different dimensions of apostleship. And all who plant churches are not apostles. There are many who God leads them to start a church. They start it because we have a whole different structure in our land today. It is not an apostolic structure, but the apostolic structure is coming in more and more and more. We have something like, I think, 115 pastors in the Faith Center of Ministries International Apostolic Network. Apostles identify and implement changes needed to build people, churches, organizations, and geographical regions. They empower others and they launch destinies. Apostles confront heresy and bring correction and restoration in the body, setting things in order. Apostles always see strategies to build, expand, and take territory from Satan. That's the work of an apostle. Apostles judge matters without being judgmental. They judge it by biblical terms. Apostles don't have a board to control them. If they get out of line, God will remove them since he put them in. And that happens, by the way. I can almost hear somebody say, well, that makes the pastor then almost a God. Small g, yes, but not God. A God-given responsibility with the authority and anointing to back it up. In Exodus 4, 14 through 16, I read for you the assignment of Aaron for Moses. And Aaron was not to act upon his own authority even though he was very important in the combination. But Moses was to hear from God and tell Aaron what to say, and what God told Moses became God to Aaron. It was the voice and the command of God for that position. The only place where the people chose leaders was in the book of Acts, the sixth chapter, and the first verse. Acts chapter 6, verse 1, these words. Now in those days... When the number of the disciples was multiplying, there arose a complaint among the Hebrews by the Hellenists because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution of food and necessities and so on. Then the twelve summons the multitude of the disciples and said, It is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Therefore, brethren, seek out among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The church is not a democracy. Church is a theocracy. Theo meaning God. God is our director and is in charge. 
I'm going to ask Pastor Bird if he'll come to the platform along with our staff pastors. And I'm going to ask Pastor Swen to join us, if you will, at this time as we set aside Pastor Bird and commission him as an apostle. Commissioning is a direct result of God's direction in what we are doing. I'm going to pour oil on his head. I thought as I was preparing this, how much to pour? <laughs> because in the Bible, it ran down Aaron's beard. And you all pour just as much as you like. <laughs> And it ran down Aaron's beard, and he didn't have a beard, so I can't do that. And probably didn't have as much on top as Aaron had. So I don't, but I will pour, not anoint, tonight. As we set him aside. To me, this is a very serious time, a very important time, and it will make an impartation for life. Will you stand with me as we pray? Come stand right here, will you? Now by the authority given to me as an apostle of Jesus Christ, to commission you an apostle, I'm anointing you with oil. That the glory of the Lord will fill your life in a new dimension and that the authority of apostleship will change your future from what it has been to something brand new in dimension. I pray that your anointing will increase with power and your normal ministry of deliverance to those who are bound by spirits will be multiplied many times over and will be taken in authority against all the forces of darkness at a new level, saith the Lord. I now anoint you for that service commission you as an apostle of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. This is to certify that Jonathan Lewis Bird, having proven a divine gift and calling to the ministry of the gospel of Jesus Christ, has been endorsed as worthy to engage in the usual public function of the ministry and is now commissioned to the office of apostle by the authority of Faith Center Ministries International. One of the symbols of authority that generals, admirals always wore was a sword on the side. I got a little one for him. <laughs> and it says, presented to John, Apostle Jonathan Bird, commissioned by Apostle Don Lyon, September 15, 2013. Amen. You. You're welcome. Two Africans embracing, one a real one, one a fake one. <laughs> but he has been to Africa and ministered in Liberia several times, so he qualifies on that basis. God bless you. It's yours. Thank you.
God bless you. Thank you so very much for your kindness, all of your love. Would you please turn to the book of Hebrews, chapter 7. Apostle Lyon was visiting with me just shortly in my office the other day and stopped by and before he left my office, I, I told him I can't find any words at the moment to tell him thank you, but thank you. I don't know if you've ever been that overwhelmed. Thank you. That sometimes you just can't find the words that are right, that will express what you mean, and give it to full intensity. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 7, beginning with verse 1, it says, For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being translated king of righteousness, and then also king of Salem, meaning king of peace without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of the days nor end of life, but made like the Son of God, remains a priest continually. Now consider how great this man was, to whom even the patriot Abraham gave a tenth of the spoil, and indeed those who are of the sons of Levi, who receive the priesthood, have a commandment to receive tithes, from the people according to the law, that is, from their brethren, though they, though they have come from the loins of Abraham. But, but he whose genealogy is not derived from them received tithes from Abraham who blessed him who had the promise. And now, beyond all contradiction, the lesser is greater. The lesser is blessed by the greater. What you just witnessed is there no greater, there's no greater gift that a father can give a son than what apostle just gave me. The lesser was blessed by the greater. And Abraham, after he was blessed by the greater, gave a gift to him. Apostle Lion, I'd like to honor you with this gift. Would you turn in your Bibles just for a moment to the book of Genesis chapter 41? I don't want to spend a whole lot of time there, but I'd like to just point something out, and I'd like for you to visit it with me. In Genesis chapter 1, I think many of you know the story, the story about Joseph, how Joseph began. And it all began with a dream that Joseph has gotten from the Lord. And in Genesis chapter 41, I want to look at just two verses, and then I'd like to bring this short message to you that I hope will be an encouragement to you. But before I go any further, I'd like to acknowledge some very special people to me. Um, number one, my wife and my family who are sitting in the back, Cindy Bird. And my wonderful children and grandchildren who have kept me young. <laughs> I love you and thank you so very much for all of your love and all of your wonderful support. Also like to acknowledge all of the mighty ex-leaders who are here, who've worked so diligently, um, going up and down the highways with me and talking with people who probably didn't uh, know whether or not we were for real or not. And, 
And, uh, you know, you kind of run into some different kind of mindsets when you go into little small towns. And um, not everybody thinks that you're wonderful. And, uh, but we know what God has said to us. So I'd just like to acknowledge them. Would you please stand if you're here in the service? Thank you so very much. As I was um, thanking to myself, I probably have said thank you to Jesus for Apostle Lion probably a million times. He just didn't know it. And, uh, you know, I actually carry his picture in my pocket. I, I kid you not. I have a wonderful picture of him, my co-pastor. And, uh, you know, you carry people that you love close to your heart. And he's right there with my family. But in Genesis 41, beginning in verse 51, it's a story about Joseph. And he has a couple of children. And in verse first, uh, 51, it says, Joseph called the name of his firstborn Manasseh. For God has made me forget all my toil in all my father's house. Now that word toil means, it means trouble, sorrow, grief, pain, misery, rejection, brokenness, bondage, fear, prison, and fatherlessness. I want you to hear what Joseph said. He said, God had made me forget all of my toil. And then he said about his second son. His second son, in the name of the second son, he called Ephraim. He said, for God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. Did you lift your hands with me to heaven? Now I want you to hear what the word of the Lord said. There's two things that happened here today. Number one, it was a father giving a son the greatest gift that he could give him. And all at the same time, a rebuke to Satan. And God has made me fruitful in the land of my affliction. Father, every lifted hand in, in this room is an uplifted hand and a heart that says, thank you. For you are able to save from the uttermost those who come to you. Father, we thank you for your saving love and your saving grace. And I ask you to anoint and to bless every heart that has hope in change, to break change, and to bring deliverance to every single person. Father, I thank you that you have caused us to be fruitful in the land of our affliction. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, the devil had his chance and he blew it. Mm -hmm. I've been telling him that, I've been telling him that for several days. I said, devil, you blew it. In fact, you blew it big time. I want to begin tonight by saying that God is a dreamer. Let me say that to you again. I want to begin tonight by saying that God is a dreamer. His book, the Bible, is actually the stories of his unstoppable dreams which were activated by faith. We are told in the scripture that God wasn't satisfied with angels alone, as amazing as angels are. But his desire was to create sons and daughters who would be compatible and suitable for his son, Jesus. In Genesis chapter 1, let me read.